Hi everybody, it's Vanessa. I'm here to film an onslaught of videos of my favorite books of the year. I'm separating this into three different videos this year just for sanity's sake considering I did read over a hundred books. I am going to be doing ten books in each except graphic novels and graphic novels I think I'll do five. So we're going to start this video with non-fiction. I did decide an order going from 10 to 1 so my most favorite will come at the end and one thing that I've also realized when making these lists is that rating doesn't necessarily always translate as to what's going to be your favorite at the end of the year and I might rate something 4.5 just because I feel like the book quality, the writing, or something didn't work perfectly, but still some of those kind of sneak up to the top of the list just because they have stuck with me or I walk around and I think about them whenever I'm in my daily life. They come up in conversation and so that's what I mean by favorite to me is the books that have really stuck with me that I keep thinking about. Let's start with nonfiction favorites. My number 10 book on this list is The Blood of Emmett Till by Timothy B. Tyson. I read this book on audio in the springtime. It really was the first time that I heard the Emmett Till story completely and there's also new information in this book. I really learned a lot about the situation as well as the context, the historical context of everything, including what Emmett Till's family thought, their activism, especially his mother, and what uh, black newspapers were doing, how they covered it, and why this is such a landmark for the civil rights movement. I really thought Timothy B. Tyson wrote it in a way that was accessible while still keeping the scope pretty large. Number nine is When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. I also listened to this on audiobook. I think audiobook is the way to go particularly because of the ending, the epilogue, which turned this book from something that was very insightful and thought-provoking into something that was emotionally wrenching and emotionally resonant for me. The only book in this entire year that made me cry. It's just a book that made me think a lot about what a life means and how families really think when they're put in situations that are so difficult. Number eight is Columbine by Dave Cullen. I listened to this book mostly on audiobook, though I did read some of it on ebook. It was one that was so well researched and look at so so many angles of this story that was very important in the way that we talk and think about gun violence in America and gun violence in schools and it was something that as a 90s kid I didn't really know. I was only seven when it happened and I feel like I know a lot more about how this could have occurred as well as what life was like after everything happened in Columbine. So very expertly written and told in a way that is engaging but also gives you the information and all the background that you need to know. Number seven on my list is Trainwreck by Sadie Doyle. This was one book that after I finished it I was singing its praises and I was just so into it and I think most of that came from the delivery on the audiobook. It was just so sarcastically and funnily told. It reminds me a little bit of Unmentionable by Therese O'Neill in that delivery. I just love this because it gave me new information about historical women and how the idea of the train wreck is not just something that is new to us, but something that has been in our history. And we have labeled women train wrecks in the same way we do now, but in other ways in the past. So I. Just just loved learning about those women and the contemporary women as well and having Sadie Doyle really criticize that and really dismantle this idea of a train wreck. I think she did that really well and she really had me agreeing with her arguments. If you are at all a pop culture fan and if you are into pop stars like Britney Spears and Amy Winehouse, this book was so so interesting. A great feminist read I think. And number six on my list is Reading with Patrick and it was one that I put on my five star TBR predictions and I did end up giving it five stars. I don't think this book is perfect in that the writing I don't think is perfect but I really really loved the message and I loved how connected I felt to the author and like her principles and the way she views the world and her role models. The way that she took on education in impoverished areas really poked holes at the idea that education is going to solve everything. We need to solve other things like making sure people aren't living in poverty, making sure they have enough to eat and that they don't face traumas in their daily lives 
lives before they can really focus on education. So I really loved hearing her take on it and hearing about her relationship with the titular Patrick and reading with him. Reading being a gateway to so much, but that also there's limitations to education. Number five on my list was one that really, really aggravated me in the content and one that I really, really loved in the way that it was written and delivered to us, and that is Violated. This book was just so fascinating because it really gave you a one-on-one -on -one accounting of all the things that these women faced by focusing specifically on them. I loved having these women tell their own stories and then I loved how they turned that on to how the university really failed them. Also just the ideas of Baylor as a private university and as a Christian university and how that really didn't help these women who decided to go to Baylor for all those reasons that it was a small school and a Christian school and also just how ridiculous it is that so many of the men that were accused were accused multiple times and it was something that the university could have really stopped beforehand but they didn't so just to hear these women's stories i think it is a great great read i thought that it was very engaging in the way that it was written it's by investigative journalists so i i really saw that come through in the writing it was one that once i really got going even though it was a really tough read I was really engaged and wanted to know what ended up happening. Continuing on my feminist recommendations, number four on my list is We Were Feminists Once. She was one of the co-founders of Bitch Media and really one of her driving forces when she got started was that one day pop culture was going to be okay with feminism. Feminism was going to be mainstream and that's going to really be like the tide changing. If we saw it in pop culture, it would mean that it's true, that it's here, that it's arrived. And what she really argues in this book is that it's really not the case. Really, feminism has been corrupted in the past five or so years as more and more celebrities and for-profit companies have taken on these messages and themes in their advertisements and in the way that they portray themselves. It's like the hot cool thing to call yourself now but that really there's no real work going on in the background and there's no transformation coming. I found her argument very persuasive and I loved the way that she wrote it because she's kind of sarcastic. Again, if you really are into pop culture like I am then you will understand all of the references that she mentions and for me it also checked me and that's something that I really value in books because it's not just me realizing okay Beyonce, I'm a Watson, Taylor Swift are doing these things. It's me thinking to myself, wow Vanessa, you've done that in the past. You really shouldn't do that and you should do this instead to actually make the world a better place. So a book that was really, really thought-provoking and that I loved. Number three on my list is Evicted. Evicted was one of those books that took me a little bit to get into, but once I did, I was super, super into it and I read like the last third or the last half in one go. It's a book that just gives you a portrait into what it's like to live in the cycle of eviction and poverty and how those two things affect each other and how that is really detrimental to the life and well-being of people who go through this as well as the children of those people and how that cycle is really difficult to get out of because of the housing costs that we have in the United States these days. It just was a really great ethnographic look at this by having him embed himself in all of these people's households and it's a book that if you read it I I assure you, you are going to become way more compassionate and sympathetic to what they're going through. Number two on my list is Dead Mountain. Dead Mountain really swept me off my feet and it's not something that usually happens in nonfiction. Like usually I'm pretty engaged in nonfiction, but when I read nonfiction, I'm not usually gasping. I'm not usually like covering my mouth with my hand. And this book did all of those things. We are following these people who mysteriously died in the Ural Mountains in Russia in a really, really cold area hiking. I love mountain slash hiking slash climbing stories, but this one was so different than many that I have read. Like Into Thin Air will always be the OG for me, but Dead Mountain is a close second just because of everything that's going on because he traces what happened to them, but he also gives new theories as to what could have happened to these people. And it's just very, very fascinating. If you want something that is very, very thrilling and exciting and kind of shocking, this book will do that to you. I read it in like two days. And last but not least, my favorite nonfiction book of the year, I think, 
is Claudette Colvin, Twice Toward Justice by Philip Hoos. This is marketed as a children's book, and I've seen other places where it's more YA. It is a biography of Claudette Colvin, who really was Rosa Parks before Rosa Parks was Rosa Parks. Claudette Colvin did not give up her seat on the bus nine months before Rosa Parks did. She grew up in Montgomery, Alabama, right in the heart of all of it. She also was part of the youth chapter of the NAACP with Rosa Parks as her mentor, so she was very tuned in into everything that was happening. And this is a story that shows you who Claudette Colvin was, what happened that day and after that. It's really great to me because it has first person interviews with her and every chapter will start with her take and then Philip Hoos will go in after that and discuss the historical context to everything as well as kind of the legal and cultural repercussions of everything. There's really really great pictures in it as well which really gets you to understand and see everybody and to me for a children's book it was fantastically researched. It has so many notes and resources in the back that Philip Hoos did all that work for us as well as make sure that he got that first person account from Claudette Colvin. He like tracked her down and, and kept asking her to do this book with him for years and years before she finally said okay. And it's just to me fantastic to hear her story. It's a woman that's still alive today and I just want more people to know about her. That is it for my favorite books of the year. This is kind of more of a gushy top 10 than it is like an informative top 10. If you would like to hear more extended thoughts about all of these, I'll link some of those videos down below um, of my wrap ups that include them and I'll timestamp them and everything. Thanks so much for watching my video. Hopefully I read even better nonfiction next year. If you've read any of these or would like to read any of these, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.